Hello, really short briefing today with just two things. One, the focus for next week and, uh, and the run up to the exams after the Easter break. And the second one, how we're organised from a governance perspective. So firstly, we've got four days next week and then the run up to the exams after Easter to make sure that we there isn't that gap between our aspirations and our performance. Four days next week to make sure we continue with that high quality teaching and learning in every single lesson, every single day. That lean focus on what we want students to be able to learn and do by the end of that lesson, led by an expert teacher, thinking carefully, for example, on how they're questioning students and checking for understanding, and then what we're doing with that knowledge when we found those gaps, gaps in knowledge, how are we going to fill those gaps in knowledge? How are we creating that environment where students know that they are expected to work hard and think hard? And how are we sequencing our curriculum, our topics, our lessons to make sure that all of our students reach their potential? We need to make sure that nothing's left to chance. So revisiting that umbrella of actions that we discussed at the 7UP conference in January, making sure that we're implementing those actions, especially for our higher prior attaining students, making sure that all of our year 13 and year 11 students are revisiting their knowledge in lessons and outside of lessons, uh, doing revision, high quality active revision, following practice, practice questions, practice papers um, in the ways that we've described to our students. We need to make sure that any students who falls into the category of disadvantaged students are getting every bit of help possible to overcome their barriers to learning, whether they're perceived or otherwise. So secondly, I want to talk through this diagram our, and, and to discuss how we're organised, how our governance is organised. So members, they sit at the top of, of multi-academy trusts and they have oversight of trustees. They can appoint and they can remove trustees. Our trustees at the next layer, next level down, they exercise all the powers of the foundation. They ensure a clarity of vision, ethos and strategic direction. They hold executive leaders to account for the educational performance and financial performance. And they ensure the trust ability to operate as a going concern. So there's two, two main um, committees, the Audit and Compliance Committee and the Quality of Quality and Culture Committee, the Audit Compliance Committee, make sure that we're following all of the uh, the regu regulatory um, uh, regulatory guides and, and 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 compliance that we're meant to follow, including health and safety and all areas of uh, of of the of the Academy Trust Handbook that we have to follow, um, and and making sure that we um, financially we are financially sound as an organisation. The quality and culture looks at the student experience and focuses very closely to check that we are making sure that the Sir John Brunner Foundation is a great place to learn and a great place to work for our professionals. We have a remuneration committee that, that um, uh, monitors and sets the pay of executive leaders and over, oversight of senior leader pay. And we have these what's currently known as the School Representation Committee, but will soon be called the Governance Forum, and this ensures good communication and collaboration between our governors and our trustees. We're next, next level down with the executive, which includes myself, and there's two main groups. There's the executive heads group, which includes the principals and all the heads from across the foundation and the director of school improvement, and that's a place to share and create best practice. And we have the chief executive group, which looks at the business support side of the foundation, and again, sharing and creating best practice in that area as well. Um, in terms of line management, I line manage all of the heads as, C as CEO and the principal of the college. I do that line management, including their performance management, which I do with the chairs of the local governing bodies. So on to our governors, on to the governing bodies. Important local oversight that includes two parent governors. As per the, the Articles of Association, the governing body in, in any multi-academy trust is a subcommittee of the trust board. And the governing body's role, responsibilities and accountabilities is to set is, is all set out in our scheme of delegation. The remits for the governing body and its committees are defined in our terms of reference, which are set by the trust board. And governors, appoint, governors are appointed by the trust board following recommendation from the governing body. The governing body's role is to support and challenge the heads and the, uh, the, and the principal of the college and the SLTs for the standards in the school. They have input into the budget setting and recommend it for approval to trustees and an important role in monitoring and that oversight in the monitoring of the budget. Um, and, we, and also keeping that focus on, on teaching and learning in every, every lesson every day because at all levels of that organisation we're, we're focused on making sure that we are enhancing and advancing every child's life um, through the highest quality of education. 
So thank you to all of those uh, those teaching staff and leaders that are giving up some time over the Easter break for Easter School. Thank you to any support staff who are working over the Easter break. But I hope you all find time to have a restful and enjoyable break when we get there at the end of next Thursday. Thank you. <laughs>